Look out. Footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your new one-stop shop for all things AFLW. Well, it's not new because we're into like the 14th week of the season, but hey, we're here for you because it's finals time. Semi-finals to be exact. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, up and about for two banging games of footy this weekend. Joined, as always, by Bryony Dawson, who you can't see right now, but he's wearing Tiffany shoes because they are that awesome. That's right. I do they love my sneakers, nice. yeah. and they're really keeping me upright and breathing this week. I'm you, really, I'm in the thick of it, you've mate. You've got more energy today, so I'm... I'm oh, i got more energy yeah. today, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, oh, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, okay. My vibes about. are high for the, for the preview. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Ooh. And over there, the little fella. He's nice and happy. His team's got a week off. They're yes. into a prelim final. It is the stats guy, Liam McCallion. Stress-free week for North fans. Loving it. Just let's go. And okay. you've got you've got the men's fixture dropping. Apparently, you're playing in a Thursday night game. Like this is Honestly, like the greatest week as a North fan oh, ever. I, I couldn't give a crap about the fixture. I almost <laughs> saw there, but uh, yeah, why not? We're playing on a Thursday night game. North men's why not? Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, North are doing it, but the Swans aren't. Make it make sense, people. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not uh, salty at all. I, I'm actually happy about. Point it. of order, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yeah. Women's football. Yes. Moving on. Good we'll call. be joined by Hawthorne's very own All Australian nominee Lucy Wales later up in mm. the show. So that's going to be a great chat as Hawthorne go into their semi final this weekend off the back of only their second loss this season. Mm. Before we get to that, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is just AFL Today. There, of course, on social media, it is AFLW Today. Facebook, Instagram. TikTok and X. Get around it. Whatever you find a good podcast, five star rating, leave a review. Just get around it, please. Like, where did the, we're the good part of the season? It's the right time to get on board. It's the pointy end. Yes. It's the good stuff. It's the special sauce. Because can Very you smell it? Because Forty's back. Forty's right. back. Let's get into some news. The All Australian squad was announced on Monday. Two points of order here, maybe three. <laughs> Eb Marinoff, nine for nine in the squad. Yeah, that's elite. Just elite. Lo- and lock her in. She's going to be the All Australian captain this year. That was, captain. My, that was my question. Is she locked for the captain? She's been the best player this year by so far. It isn't funny. It doesn't yeah, it always doesn't, mean that you're the captain. It doesn't always be the, the captain. She's a good leader, I think, as yeah. well, though. So. Is she? I, I think so. Okay. Leads by example. I, I, what, do you, what do you think? Yeah. Puts yeah. the team on her back. Mm. Well, Emma Carney's not in there. No. For the first, first time ever, in fairness, she did rip her hamstring. I understand She that. probably would be in there if she didn't get 100% injured. 100% yeah. she would She's be in there. She's been all eight... Uh, AFLW All Australian teams. That is yeah. the only player to do that through the whole time. So That's yeah, now Marinoff takes the record being in the squad nine for nine, but hasn't made nine All Australian teams yet. Mm-hmm. Jazzy Garner's got a ridiculous record as well. But you have a look through it. Forty-four players named. Uh, Shanae Goody named in her first season. We awesome. did declare at the start of the year she was going to be the rising star. Competition's a bit tougher than what I thought it would be at the yeah, start a little of the bit. year. But yeah. great, great for her to do that. Yep. No players from Collingwood. Makes sense. The Giants. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. And the Western Bulldogs. Well, Ellie Blackburn went down, so that also I makes sense. I think the Pritchard I've put in here is like a, a bit unlucky because as soon as Blackburn went down, Pritchard went to another level for the yeah. Dogs. And then well Parker, uh, at least Parker. Yeah. You, Absolute from freak the as well. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of midfielders you in can't the pick AFLW. 40 midfielders. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. That's yeah. the tough yeah. part. But I think they're the most unlucky. I, yeah. Sorry to the Pies fans, but. Lots of injuries, a lot of people moving. No and... one stood out nah, for Collingwood probably. enough this year. Like you had Britt Benici and Sasha Ruby was really, really good. well. Benici but was really good. They weren't in the top 15 midfielders of the comp this year. No. And that's no I'll nothing. agree with that. Yeah. Very so, heavy, Essendon, Matty Gay, Jordan yes, Anscorn. Thank nice. you very much. Yeah, yeah. I, Maddie... I reckon they'll both make the team. Yep. Yeah. Look at you just That's go. what I'm feeling. I'm yeah, like, no, no, Nance get me an yeah, Nance Gorn. I agree. Get me an Nance It's hard to make it in that. Um, Maybe on the bench. Yeah. But Matty Press- Gay's a lock for half back. Matty Presbarkus, not in there. That's what I was going to say, mm. Matty Presbarkus. Yeah. No Pressy P. Not yeah. as... Or maybe I think some players don't get picked because they might have a tiny little drop. They're still guns. But you also have a yeah. look like... I don't know. Matty Presbarkus, Charlie Rowbottom. Most mm-hmm. clearances in the competition, most contested yeah. ball. And Maddie's like, they're, yeah. they're, they are basically the same player. They are contested bulls in the midfield. It's like, we had, I think you had to pick Charlie. Mm. Given her season, she cleaned up their best, Gold Coast best and fairest as well. But happy for Nance Gordon. I think yeah, yeah. underrated a little Ooh, bit. So yeah. There we go. No Anne Hatchard either, which... No Hatchie. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a bit unlucky, I think. Or Kate Hall. I think Kate Hall, I think you said, oh, not fast, but I think that she's unlucky as well. I reckon she's because unlucky, I, I, not to make the squad. I'd have her in that squad, yeah. I'd definitely have her in the squad. Yeah. If Melbourne were a better team this year, I yeah. think that she'd definitely. Only be. Chaplin from Melbourne made the squad. Yeah. So six Even from... Goldrick, I think, is very unlucky. I think yeah. she had a really good year. Too. Yeah, but. And Mel... also, no no other Press Parkers as well. No Georgie. Well, she was I know, injured. I yeah. know, injured, yeah. but. but... 
really good player. Yeah. yeah. So six from Hawthorne, five from Adelaide, Brisbane, and North. Uh, no team had four, which was weird. Uh, three from Freo and Port Adelaide, two for Essendon, Geelong, Richmond, St Kilda, Sydney, West Coast as well. So uh, what was that? Ella Roberts and Charlotte Thomas Charlotte made Thomas, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one from Carlton, Gold Coast, and Melbourne. Uh, I thought Keely Shirai was a little bit stiff. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. I know, I know awesome. Carlton Kicks and goals as well, yeah. Carlton weren't great, but I thought she was a bit unlucky. Uh, and no Gemma Houghton. That was mine. They're, they're, my, yeah. they're my two complaints. Yeah. She's sort of the impact player now. Not the, yeah. She might kick two goals and have five or eight touches mm. rather than a, a yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. 20. I can, mm. yeah. I can, I'm a big fan of yeah. Gemma Houghton, but. Yeah, she was kind of like up and she stood up in all the key moments yeah. that they needed her yeah. this year. But I wouldn't say she had the most consistent. Yeah, yeah. I'll agree yeah. with that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, mm-hmm. Stats Guy, you were kicking up for Jazz Ferguson and making the team. You think the selectors uh, had a bit of mistaken <laughs> identity. I really like Sarah Wright, but I think you got two, uh, I don't know, they look they look very similar, <laughs> blonde hair in the back line. I'd, I'd be picking Jazz Ferguson over Sarah Wright every day of the week, but mm. that is my opinion, but... They're both really good. You're I, calling I, out our good friend Eliza Riley, who was on the selection committee. I'm sure it wasn't Eliza. I think there was been a few other factors. Eliza's really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think, but you had to have someone from North's defense being the number one defense. So I'm happy Wright or Ferguson in there. Um, yeah. No KB, Katie Brennan. Yeah. Yeah, no. I Did, think. Didn't have the, bit, uh, bit didn't have the best of years. No, bit but then, but, Okay. You, oh, actually. I suppose I, you can I, look at it, but it's like. Jesse goals? Wardlaw made the squad, which I was a bit. No, yeah, I I'm not for I'm Jesse the, Wardlaw uh, after the first the four weeks. Yeah, she dropped. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, had a good game late in the season, but I'm like, mm, you know, yeah, I'm happy to swan made the team. I'm, yeah, I was squad. Sorry, I was very, I was, I was surprised that Brenna Tarrant made the squad. To be honest, like, I mm. thought she had a very good year, but the Swans did leak goals like the sieves through the year. And Sophia Hurley, I thought she was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe a sneaky bench play, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, you just look at the team. It's like okay, Haw- Hawthorne North. Port are probably and Brisbane are just going to dominate. The That's the other reason the Gemma Houghton's not yeah. in there because she didn't have to. We said we said this all year. She doesn't have to do as much since all their young players are all stepping yeah. up now. So yeah, yeah. There's like a lot yeah. of new people in here, as, especially as what, because 21 out of the 44 are new. Yeah, in yeah. Australian squad, which yeah. is great. Awesome. But also we've had nearly every <clears throat> massive star in the competition and injured themselves. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 So, about like, yeah, yeah, but you Bonnie have, too good to be always be in there. Yeah, yeah. Chloe Malloy. Chloe would always be. Yeah. There. I think what you've Malloy. got six of the team last year that missed a fair chunk of the year because I got Chloe Malloy, Ali Morford, Bonnie Too Good, Emma. Um, yeah, Carney. Uh, KB. KB, oh, yeah, KB Brennan. Brennan. yeah, yeah, yeah Brennan, did, yeah. Uh, and also uh, Purcell. Yeah, yeah. So they're, or, they're six straight away. True. Kate Hall. Yeah, yeah she no. missed a fair bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so aside from the obvious ones, which is like your Marinoffs and your Soph Conways, who is your lock to make the team? Uh, uh, can't say Taylor Smith either because she's Sheila. Le- Sheila. Yeah, just because she sets up a lot of goals. Mimstrom. Oh yeah, Mimstrom. <laughs> yeah, rock. Oh, that's too, <laughs> that's too easy. easy. Yeah, I reckon because I'm gonna say Matty Gay. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like how you're sticking up. Stick, nice. Sticking up for the team. It's yeah. All right. I think that's a lot, yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on. So some news came through during the week that we do have 12 home and away games next year in the dub. Yo. We're moving up. One Slowly. extra game. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, I, was waiting moving. For that. I, was, I was honestly waiting for that. <laughs> so was I. It's, it's, Time it's, to break free. No, stop. We're not I'll breaking stop. free because no, we, we want 17 home and away games. Yes, anyway, we're getting we're there. We're getting there. Slowly. One game at a time. <laughs> Is that Gru? <laughs> I do like Gru. Oh, yeah, we watch that before the kids go to bed every night. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I have, my issue is list size is still capped at 30. I yeah, think we saw this injuries. year with all of the injuries and everything that's going on, even bumping it to 32 mm. would have been good. That also means we're still at 16 versus 16 next year, which mm-hmm. is a another. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I like sixteen. I, like I 16. want eighteen. No, it I makes really more space for. I think we've seen that space. this year. Stats guy, though, when you get out of clearance and you've got a quick kick and you turn around, there's no one there. That's the that's coach's, game, yeah, that's that's the coach's game strategy. Fault. Like when Crocker changed it on the Adelaide North game, when they're like, "Oh, we're just going to keep it forward there," then North started winning. Anyway, yeah, I'm on I know 18. what you're saying, but extra two players on the ground when you're playing on these grounds when the balls aren't flying as high. There'll be there'll be more congestion. No. Yeah. Yeah. It opens right. it up, hundred percent. Right. Right. What about have we ruled out condensed fixture? Uh, apparently, do we have? Oh dates? yeah, no, they haven't. They haven't said so, that. They haven't ruled. I feel like they haven't because they were still like so putting the, it on the table. So <laughs> the, the problem with with not one not knowing where the dates are, and this is another thing I sent this to you last night. Mm. When the season starts, has a big impact on the Irish contingent. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of them go home and go play home. Gaelic football, and the season ends in August. Mm-hmm. If we have a July start date. 
we're going to lose a lot of the flair in this game. Wait, but, yes, we're going to... Really? Um, as in the Irish will choose to play Gaelic footy. Over. Do you reckon they they'll choose no, no, they to won't. play the Gaelic? I've, I've met lots of them. They don't get paid for, to play yeah, Gaelic. Yeah, but you've seen There's, a lot of Irish play. It's the go-home... I think go home, we'll miss a few because of the go-home factor. It's factory. the go-home factor. Yeah, of course. Uh, a lot pre-season. Of, yeah, pre-season But most well. of them will stay. They're, they're getting... Obviously not paid enough. We've talked about that, but they're getting paid here. You don't get paid at all for Gaelic football. Yeah. I think they'll. I think they'll stay here. I reckon a few. I reckon a few more than you'd suspect would go home. Okay. Because family, big, yeah. big thing in it's Ireland. It's a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. And the, the they get really homesick. I remember Eric yeah. O'Shea just re-signed for North. Actually, yeah. was talking about uh, how hard it was early on. Well, Sarah Rowe that. talked about it this week on yeah. her yeah. podcast as well. So go check that out. Because you also forget been... they're really young as well. Of course. I remember yeah. when I moved. <laughs> I moved out of home at like 18 to go to uni and I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I was so tough and I'd like yeah, fuck yeah. the house. And I literally got there and I remember sitting in my room and I was like, this sucks. Yeah. And I literally drove home oh. like three hours after arriving in Ballarat. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're so, in Ballarat. There's your first problem. Ballarat was the best three years of my life. Love Ballarat. You Thank you very much. But that homesickness is it like oh, yeah. Especially can overseas, yeah. rip through well, yeah, you're three hours away. Yeah, not yeah, no, 30, I understand that. So not, I understand the homesickness yeah, the homesick, and yeah, that's fair. And you know, but also the the pride of the Irish players in being able to play the Gaelic. Yeah, rules, they love you know, it. They it's love it, like yeah. it, that's a big thing. For in, it's in like hometown and things yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's it's not like it's life changing money. It's for some players, it's sixty, seventy grand. For yeah, but the it's top, like top yeah. of the line, it's one hundred and ten thousand. Yeah, if it was. 300,000. So, yeah. Stay yeah, in see, Australia. You. see you, mum and dad. Peace. <laughs> like, you know. What if it was Toti Tree stuff? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has to happen at least once every Thursday. Yeah. An hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, AFL uh, in 2026, please just give us 18 versus 18. Just. Please. It's not going to jump up that high, Alex. You need to manage your no, own. Eight, eight, no, 18 versus 18 on the field. Oh, no, they're not no, going to do that either. I think they've already tested out that and it doesn't As work. As a lot of people said on the Facebook, it's like it's like the AFL saw my five-point play and went, no, not doing it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> anyway, I just need you to know that the AFL did not ever look at your five-point plan. I mean, I could have shown it to <laughs> I her. reckon they did. I could <laughs> have shown it to Laura Kane on Friday night at Icon Park where some North dude who'd had about seven cans was chewing her ear off. Oh, yeah. Oh. I felt so, I was because I was about 20 minutes away from it and you could just see just kind of, yeah, the Gosh. seven can in YouTube. She's like, I should just go in, the, in a box somewhere. Yeah. I don't have to do yeah, with these people. Yeah, because there's boxes at there Icon Park. On the other side where I was, there, there was people in some boxes. That's yeah. the media room. No, there was random people having No, it's the it. school. It's the, they've got like a full, it, they've got a school there at Icon Park. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, that oh, whole, In that grandstand school. Yeah, that's right. side. That's right. Then there's like full box There is boxes there, yeah, box yeah. windows. You, yeah. yeah, it's great. I was hanging at Harry's Servers eating the chips. Harry's yeah. Servers. Yeah, Thank out. you. <laughs> yeah. See, I found where, I think I found where you get your bad uh, dimmies from yeah. too. Like, I saw it, I was like, that's, that's the Lorraine. And I'm not going to say what one. I, like, no, I, I had some uh, very nice pie from there, but I didn't have not have the Ooh, nice pie. Yeah, nice pie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit Cartman. Yeah. You yeah. like nice pie? Nice pie. <laughs> Did you get some cheesy pears? Why is that really Let good? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric. We've really gone down. We haven't Speaking even, we haven't even got past news yet. <laughs> yeah, Bell Doors. Uh, yeah, Bell Doors got off her suspension. Uh, for the one time I think the AFLW got this right. Well, they got it wrong originally by suspending her for a week. Uh, when she looked like she was going for the ball and who'd she clean up? I've just spaced on who she cleaned up. No worries. Anyway, yeah. going for the foot, going for the footy football accident, got off the suspension. Happy with know, that. Yeah. yeah. It just, you know, logic prevails. Also doing it at 9am, logic prevails. Men's competition, 9am midweek. So David Zeta and everyone else isn't waiting till 1am, you yeah. morons. True. Good stuff. It was like uh, something like two hours of deliberating, though. I don't think it was a decision that was come to you. Very yeah, but lightly. if you're doing it at 9 a.m. and you're done by lunchtime, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. And we're all on board that she should have got off. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, a hundred. Because it was like it was in the play. She you tried to get it, out the you way. You saw it come out. The ball was there. I don't know why she got a suspension in the first place. That's. Yeah. A, I would actually love bad. to see the stats on Gemma Bastiani if you're watching mm. stats. Um, on how many people were reported and how many got turned over this year? Because like, yeah, well, I'm, we could I'm, find that. I'm going to pump that out. I'm going to go off the top of the head, eighty percent. Eighty percent turned out. I reckon eighty like percent that off. were overturned. Uh, overturned, uh, overturned, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I got you. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I'm like, what? Like, 
They, the, look yeah. at it first. I know. They just go. Don't oh, look at it properly. Yeah. You know. Because oh, you're right. you're right. uh, like, how much time are you wasting mm. with this? With the clubs? With everything? It's like, look at it properly first. If you had have done that in all of these cases, yep. It's like it's just why the MRO silly. should be full time. It's just silly, guys. Yep. And an injury update for Frio. Ash Brazel will return this Woo! weekend. Yeah, we they are going to need her. Amy yep. Mulholland's out with concussion. Yeah. Nah, it's not great. We knew that already, sort of, but they had to yeah. confirm that. And yeah. Then, yeah. Brazel's, we knew that was Brazel's their spark, so that, that's good for Frio. The Brazla. Yes. yes. All right. With that being said, we've finally got through the news program. <laughs> Let's get across to Lucy Wiles from Hawthorne. All right. How good's this? Ahead of the semi finals this weekend on AFLW Today. Before they play at Icon Park this Saturday night against Port Adelaide, Lucy Wales from the Hawthorne Hawks joins us. Lucy, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you guys? Good, thanks, Lucy. Just living the dream, babe. Absolutely living the dream. Not as much as you, though. Semi-finals. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, feeling really excited. Um, I think, yeah, the team's really pumped this weekend. Um, Unlucky, uh, disappointing to not get it done last week, but excited that we get to play another game of footy, I guess. What were the learnings that you took out of last week? Obviously, only the second loss of the season and against one of the premier teams in Brisbane. But what are the learnings that you can take out of that heading into this weekend? Uh, Yeah, I think uh, we've just learned, I guess, with teams like Brisbane and those better teams in the competition, um, they're able to perform consistently for four quarters. So the more that we can do that, I guess, is going to put us in a uh, position to win. I think we probably played three quarters of footy on the weekend and we could quite... Um, yeah, get it done against a really um, good opposition. So I think just performing for four quarters, um, especially against Port this weekend, uh, yeah, it's going to be really important. Yeah, because Port are taking some really like incredible form um, into the finals. They're a little bit of a, a, a smoky to get up here. But, but I guess what's what's the game plan going into, into that when you're going up against a, a team that is taking um, some really good form into the finals and they've sort of got nothing to lose, you know, they're coming in as the underdog and we know that that can, that can sort of lift teams a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Port's, Port's definitely on fire right now. Um, and, yeah, I guess what we've um, become aware of is that they're really good at the contest. So I think if, if we can match them in there or at least take away some of their contest game, um, then I guess that's going to allow our our, our, um, our run on the outside, um, which is yeah hopefully where we can put put goals on the scoreboard and things like that. So I think take away their contest game um, because yeah that's where they're really strong. Yeah, they do. It's, I feel like you've got like opposite games of, of footy. You guys love the the uncontested, the outside game, and um, you know Port are just really scrappy. They love that contest and they're really good at those those ground balls. Feels like it's going to be a lot of run and gun, though. But for you yourself, more than likely going to come up against uh, Schultze from Port Adelaide as well. You're sort of looking forward to that because both of you sort of young stars in the competition, it's sort of like almost walk around going, I'm going to big dog this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that is kind of what it's like, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it's really exciting versing other young rocks in the comp, I guess. Um, Schultz has had a really good year um, as far. And, yeah, hopefully... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I guess I'm really excited to verse her, so hopefully she's feeling the same. It's a really – it's actually like both games this weekend is yeah. the good battles of the ruck with uh, Strom up against Allen this weekend as well. So we'll go back like a bit of history. Obviously, your twin sister, Steph, plays for Essendon and making your round one debut yourself against her. Surely, like, obviously that's a whole lot of fun going out playing against your sister on debut. But it also makes it easy for mum and dad to choose which game to go. So <laughs> like, oh, we're just going to be there. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. I think mum had a lot of fun making um, a scarf that had both teams. Um, oh, like that's it. nice. She Donna split it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was... split herself nicely. Yeah. Who, who did yeah. she lean on the most? Though? Like at the end of the game, who was she concerned about more or who, like given the most critiques to you? Like who did mum side with really is what I'm asking. Well, since Essendon won, um, yeah, Essendon won that one. So they got to stay out on the ground and um, so far with the <laughs> And so I think they were all over Steph at the start. And then, um, yeah, they sent two of my friends into our change rooms and went into the winning ones. So that's good. So, um, yeah. so what you're saying is you got dropped pretty quickly there, mate. <laughs> I did get dropped pretty quickly. How, how, because you live with Steph, don't you? Yeah. How is she going at the moment with the, the knee injury? Have you taken on uh, the role of, of caretaker? Has she got a little bell in her room that she's, she's ringing when she needs you? <laughs> 
Yeah, so I've taken on Rollo's full-time care. I think I was cooking her dinner last night, um, cleaning it all up, getting her ice, things like that. Um, but now she's going okay. Um, she's had surgery uh, the day before yesterday, Tuesday. So, um, yeah, she's tracking along nicely. I think she's still um, fairly positive and, um, yeah, hoping to get back for next year. So we'll see how things pan out, I guess, as rehab begins. So uh, I believe it in our research that the stats guy did, so I'm going to throw him under the bus if this is wrong. But you have a basketball background and your nickname is Pendles. Is that true? <laughs> that would be correct. I think that's one of the great nicknames because anytime you hear someone talk about Pendles, like, do you know we play basketball? So getting that, is it is it... For you, is it something like it's exciting to be na- nicknamed after someone like that? Or is it like, nah, let me forge my own thing. Like Scott Pendlebury, yeah, he's cool, but I'm going to do it here at Hawthorne. <laughs> no, no, I, I quite like it, to be honest. It's turned into many different things. It's turned into Penny. Penny's the one I get the most now. Um, Pen, Penrith, oh, a, a few things have been thrown around. So. I would have gone with Berry. Oh, you just would have gone the end. Straight gone Berry, with yeah. Or uh, Fruit, like you just roll on from Berry into Fruit. There's there's good nicknames at the yeah. Hawks because um, Charlotte Vasker and we had yeah. Carol, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask on on the back of the whole basketball thing. Now you're 184 centimeters tall. How many times per week do people go? Oh, you're pretty tall. Do you play <laughs> basketball? That's pretty much what happens every time I meet someone new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. Well, have you ever thought about getting a like just a little card that you carry around with you and you just hand it to people before they even talk to you and be like, yes, I am tall. Yes, I played <laughs> basketball and it's 184 centimetres. That, that might be the go. For or that just the, Save me from a lot of the name tags. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lucy. Yes, I know I'm tall. Yes, I used to play basketball. And then you have the QR code for the Hawthorne membership. Yes, and then, yes, I do have a twin sister. <laughs> yeah. Who is nicknamed Killer, I believe, because I think that is the greatest nickname ever. And I like that one, yeah. yeah, it's like Killer Whale. Like, it's just great. Got, yeah. Okay, it's now so I, I actually get it now. Oh, no. Yeah, it took me a while. <laughs> it took me a while. So back, <laughs> yeah, back to our Hawthorne, aside from the ridiculousness that we have here. So this season, the, the team's just gone from strength to strength to strength, double chance finishing top two on the ladder, and Daniel Webster coming in. What have the, obviously, aside from winning a lot, what are the changes you've noticed that he has brought in since he came to the club at the start of the year? Yeah, um, I, th- I think one of the main things is he he likes us all playing with our flair and our personality and, um, yeah, just, just kind of attacking the game, I guess. Um, so that style of play really suits our personnel, I think. And then I think with um, with our training standards, um, yeah, they've, they've just lifted. And that's also helped through, um, through bringing people like Eliza West, Casey Sheriff through the club. Um, but yeah, ultimately, since since uh, since Steve Webb's got at the club, he's yeah he's set the standards high, and um, we've been working really hard. He's he's been pretty awesome, and you've you you have had some massive trades in that. And so, besides the personnel, we know that a team of champions does not make a champion team. There's obviously another sort of special source at Hawthorne this year, and how you've all come together. What do you reckon that is? If you had to try and pinpoint it down to one thing. Well, the special sauce. Um, if I had to, pick, I'd probably just say our vibe around the club. I think the whole club has has really got around um, our, our AFRW program, being like the men's teams got around us, but also all the people um, working in our um, yeah our de- departments upstairs. So I think it's been a whole club approach to the AFRW season, um, which I think has has really helped us back ourselves. Um, and, yeah, make sure we're working hard to um, make, I guess, the whole club proud. It definitely helps when you're winning as well, doesn't it? It's, it's yeah. there, there's, there's lifting and then there's like, okay, we're winning as well. And then there's lifting and, you know, people are getting on, on the hock ball and, and everything like that, you know? Yeah. And I suppose it all comes to fruition with six of, six of your players, including yourself, named in the All-Australian squad this week. So, like, that must be a massive buzz around the club knowing that people outside are seeing the hard work that everyone's doing and it is paying off with... I think it's the most nominations for a team in the All Australian squad. It is. Yeah, that's it's definitely nice to see, and um, yeah, I guess we've all been working really hard. So to get those six nominations is um, yeah, really exciting. Um, I think it's it's kind of lifted everyone um, in the club. Yeah, to get that recognition, we haven't had that in the past. So um, yeah, I think it's starting to show what yeah what's been going on behind the scenes and how we've been working. 
I like it. Now, we finished these interviews off with a question that uh, Bryony asked, and it's not at all serious. It's a lot of fun <laughs> because I think that's a great answer to finish up on. So we, we end with the Bryony question, which is just the peak of ridiculousness. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lucy, so you wake up one morning and it's grand final day. Hawks are in the grand final. You wake up and you have no idea where you are. You don't recognise the room, nothing. You look at the time, you're like, I'm supposed to be at the ground in like two minutes. You go, you go to leave, you open the door, the door handle comes off. You cannot get out of this room at all. You go, you get your phone out, you look at your phone and you've got 1% battery left. Do you reckon it's like you've got like 15 seconds of a phone call to go? Who are you calling from your team that is going to come and get you out of that room? And who are you definitely not calling from your team to get you out of that room? I'm definitely not calling Sherpa. <laughs> whenever she has to drive somewhere, something always happens with her car. I don't know if she does perfectly, but it's, she's left the lights on the night before. She's locked her keys in the apartment. She's always done something, so I'm definitely not calling her. Yep. Um, who would I be calling? Reliable. Jazz Fleming's pretty reliable driving around. Her car is not reliable, but <laughs> maybe she borrows her parents sometimes. Yeah. Maybe if she came in her parents' car to get me, that would be nice. Okay. Who would run through the door for you or, like, come up with a contraption to get the door unlocked? Though? Like, who's good in a crisis like that where it's, like, if you're in, like, Physical a, strength. Or like, if you're in one of those, um like, puzzle rooms where you've got to so oh, solve the escape your way rooms. Out. The escape room. Thank yeah. you. Oh. Oh. Good in a crisis, I think, would be Emily Bates. Oh, yeah, Bates. Yeah. She, she'd, she'd have it sorted. I need the strength of Matea. So maybe them combined and may as well chuck Westy in there too, make it a midfield thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just, yeah, just the quartet, just like, yeah, okay, we've got this covered. Yeah. None of none of your Irish players in there? Not uh, calling on it. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Poor Irish. <laughs> just copping it on every level. All right, this has been Lucy Wiles from Hawthorne joining us at AFLW today. Good luck this weekend up against Port Adelaide and hopefully you win your way through to a prelim final. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Lucy. We'll be cheering for you. All right, how good was that from Pendles? Yeah. Pendles. I love that. Nickname. Oh, Pendles. I'd love rather it. kill her. Kill a while. <laughs> no, kill, yeah, I know. Kill a bit, bit too much. I like how it took both of you a lot of time to get that joke. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get the killer one when I researched it, but yeah. I got the pendulum. And then one, I yeah. told you, sure, I was like, kill a while, stats guy. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Who's the, whoever came, who came up with that, great work. That's mm. a good one. It's a good one. All right, let's get into these game previews. Of course, Saturday afternoon, the first one takes place. Adelaide taking on Fremantle Norwood Oval 335. <laughs> Good job, AFL. He's scheduling this one up against the Adelaide 500 and the doubleheader in the Big Bash in 37-degree heat. Good job. Why Why is this not a, on Friday night? Is there a reason? Uh, like, is there something I th- on Friday I night? believe that this is also, that would be a six-day turnaround for Frio with them flying across <sighs> through Adelaide. But also, this should be Friday night because there's no game on Friday night. Oh, this week. should just be the Saturday night game. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, I just, I don't think it's the best of scheduling. It's... Whatever. Anyway. They'll get a decent crowd there still. This will be a great crowd, but at a ground with not a lot of shade and that much heat, let's hope there's free water and sunscreen for everyone because that's just logic. Oh, h Well yes. done, Alex. They Thank will you. They will have. Hmm. What is it now? 34. It's gone down to a bit, a bit oh, better. Yeah. <laughs> still boiling for not a lot of bre- not a lot. As we noticed when we went there, not a lot of breeze at Norwood. No. Good yeah. food, though. Anything the, over 26 when you're playing sport is an absolute killer. Yeah, I agree. And if I you're agree. sitting in the sun, like, that's just... It's not yeah, supporters are going to hate it. Yeah, it's going to be suck fun. it up, put some sunscreen on, and cheer on your team. That's what I say. Shut up, Stan. I can't really talk. Your I'm Irish very white. Complex- yeah. I, I, I just would... get the paint roller out, chuck, chuck the sunscreen <laughs> hey, mate, on. You would turn into a beetroot. <laughs> yeah. Not, no. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Adelaide have won the last four between these two and they gave Freo a bit of a footy lesson earlier in the season by 33 points. Now, let's cast our minds back 12 months ago. Adelaide lost a qualifying final, played a home semi at Norwood and absolutely kicked the living crap out of my swans. They mm-hmm. have a thing where it was they... Like, it was a yeah. murder. They get uh, beat one week and then the next week they'll go, all right, we're back. We want to get some mm. revenge. Uh, that's what they They did that this year when they had that little slump where they would... Get beaten. They then lost, the next game, they, they, lost, would... they lost midweek and gave GWS yeah. a killing that Sunday. Mm. Not obviously free are a lot better than GWS, but they just seem to bounce back really well. Yeah, they? they do, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So we go into this where we're looking at uh, uh, Crows are the fourth best offense in the league and the second best defense. Freo were third, which seems about right. A lot of low scoring games. Yeah. 
if this gets into a who kicks the most points game, well, Freo aren't going to win that. If it's mm. a if it's a dull slog, that's what gives Freo well, their best chance. Yeah, on mm. that, Freo have only scored over thirty five points Ew. once in the last seven uh, games. So they yeah they always get around that twenty five to thirty five <coughs> mark because they got a, what, it was about thirty six last week. Yeah, yeah, um, and. Yeah, they just can't. If they need to kick a little bit more than that, I think, or make it really scrappy, which is yeah. that's the only way they can stay in this. I reckon. So, I mean, we've also talked about um, Adelaide's inconsistency in front of goal as yes, well, and yes. I just don't think that is going to matter against you know Frio, who really yeah, they can re- kick eight goals twelve exactly. Um, yeah, who's true. Really, really struggled to put scores on the board this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you look at this. The biggest thing for Frio fans to latch onto. They're unbeaten away from home this year. They five and, five and zip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's something that's like, hey, travel, water, whatever. We yeah. don't care. We can yeah. get the job done. The most fascinating part of this game for me, Jess Allen, Mimstrom. Yeah. yeah, look at this. Like the stats are pretty close. You got Jess Allen, 34 hit outs of game three clearances. Mimstrom, slightly better, 37 hit outs, four and a half clearances. Uh, Strong gets a lot more of the ball, but out the one on one in the ruck where Mimstrom, I think the last three or four weeks has gone, oh, you're a little bit smaller, you're, you're not as athletic, whereas Jess Allen can match her in the ruck. So this is actually going to be a lot closer. Like last week, Essendon didn't even have a ruck, yeah. so she dominated yeah. uh, Strom, but this one's going to be really fun to watch, I reckon. The thing I love about Jess Allen too is that she can really just tap it onto the chest of oh, the mids yeah. and they just accurate. run off. Yeah, it's yeah. just so accurate and I think it's mm-hmm. going to be uh, an incredible battle. And I think, I think in the top five, I know Mim's got the record, but then under that is Jess Allen and then all the top five, hit out records yeah. is just the two of them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. Like they're they're awesome. It's gonna be an absolute show, Battle of the Rocks. Yeah, not you one. don't often go, oh I'm, i I want to watch like the, the rocks yeah. go at it because you usually go the mids or things like that. Because there's yeah. really good mids in this as well. Yeah. But the, this will be fun. But yeah. both both games this weekend are very good rocks against mm-hmm. very good rocks. True. Like three all Australian noms yeah. this weekend. Exactly. So yeah. bring it on. And you think Mim's got the all Australian nod? Tick. Yeah, lock. I think she's yeah. locked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lock her in. If you're going to put someone on the bench, I think it might be Shelty from Port Adelaide. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. She, if, could you if you're going to put her on the bench. Could you sneak Shelty forward? She played nah. Well, that's what I mean. She's versatile. You yeah, want yeah. your All-Australian yeah, but, but then bench to be versatile, then you sort of, don't you? Yeah, have, have Just put Shelty on the ball. She but, gets a lot but of But then it. you have a look at the forward line. It's like, oh, yeah, Taylor Smith. Ponta, uh, uh, and you, oh, Soph Conway might have to end up on a flank. There's so yeah, many good yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, All right, this is about Adelaide and Freya. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the All-Australian captain elect the best player in the league, Ebony Marinoff, 30 disposals and 12 and a half tackles a, uh, a game. Crazy. That's just an insane year. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, we are seeing if Ebony Marinoff was playing in Melbourne, like any team in Melbourne, if she's playing for North Melbourne, the media would be losing their minds over the year mm-hmm. that she's having. I yeah. don't... I, We've tried. We yeah, we, not, we've always talked about it. But we I feel are like not, not giving people. her enough credit for how goddamn good <laughs> yeah, she is. She's yeah, she's absolutely incredible, and she's been so consistent. There's, there's no game. There might have been a couple of games where you're like, oh, I haven't seen Eb much this quarter, and then it's like, bang, 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 <laughs> yeah. and it's just like every single game. Yeah, yeah, she's she's off the charts. You're right, and we haven't given her enough credit, and I think. I think because she's been that way for so long in the top yeah. tiers of players, it's like, oh, it's like you just yeah. kind of expect, yeah. oh, that's just Eb. Yeah. Oh, she's just doing a marathon, yeah. yeah. you know? Yeah. Exactly. So McCarthy's in for a long evening, oh, a long yeah. afternoon. No, I think... Yeah, McCarthy's chasing, a really good player, though. Yeah, yeah. but chasing Eb Marinoff all day, it's going to be a tough ask, but also yeah. to try and get the footy yourself and then hurt her going the other way as well because, well, she tackles. She's got the two-way work rate, so... Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see. So Emma O'Driscoll is probably going to need to step up as well. Stats guy have written yeah. n- basically nine intercepts per game, the most in the competition. So yeah, across that half freak, back yeah. line where Adelaide's forwards can take a grab, she's going to be very important. She started off a bit slow because I had her in my AFIW fantasy that we did to Alex and she was thinking it up. I was like, I'm going to get rid of her. And then after like week two, she's just had mark after mark after mark. I think, yeah, similar to Maddie Gay and a few other players that we're going to talk about in the next game. Yeah. Just so awesome. A rock on that half back line. And, yeah. But Adelaide get a lot of inside 50, so she's going to have to really yeah, take a few marks, get a few spoils, uh, and then, yeah, catapult them she'll out of half back. She'll be happy Ash Brazzles back in, yes. back in the yes. team. They exactly. need a, yeah, a bit more yeah, defense and things like Make that. Make her life a little bit easier. So I think I think for this one as well, Frio, like, you know, we know that they've struggled to score in the first quarter and, and that kind of stuff as well. They need to come out of the gates here they and do, have yeah. a blistering start. Yeah. It's Unlike like last a, week. It, exactly. Well, all year. They've had six first quarters where they don't even score. You're in a yeah. semi. Mm. You're in a semi. Yeah. Snap out of it. Step into yep. a team that is semi-final worthy and just 
smash it. You need to absolutely blister out of the gates here if you are going to get across the line. Frio against Good an call. incredible Adelaide team. Should they uh, like have a match them before the game? Pretend that <laughs> pretend that they've had the first quarter, <laughs> like somehow, or like um, uh, just to go. All right, we've played the first quarter. Like, the first just quarter. get really tired before yeah. the game and go. Yeah, we've played our first quarter. Yeah, and then go. Oh, it feels like the second quarter when we start the game. Yeah, and then they'll be fired up. Got to play it each game like it's five in, quarters, man. <laughs> yeah, five quarters. Yeah, five so minutes. <laughs> last year in this same game, so it, it's the same game apart from the opposition where Adelaide played in the semi final. Mm-hmm. Two goals to one at quarter time and ended up twelve goals. To two. Mm. So if you come out, you need to come out, you, far, but yeah. you need to keep it up to yeah, Adelaide, one hundred percent, because they kicked ten goals in the second and third quarters just to absolutely rip rip the Swans apart. And Hatchard had thirty eight and two last year in this game. Okay, so Ooh. that's quite a game. That's yeah. that's yeah. quite a game, first, man. <laughs> first player in AFLW history to have thirty and two in a final. Yeah, great. So nice. just an insane game, Not but it's bad. also like Ebony Marinoff, if you're listening. You might do that. Yeah. So well, you're looking at this. It's like the big question in this game is can the Dockers make this scrappy enough to keep themselves in the game and get over the line? No. I also don't yeah, I think believe be, so. I think they'll put up a strong fight in the first half and then they're cooked after that. I reckon they'll be quarter two and three. But Ooh. then one and four. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We've talked Adelaide, about the first quarters. Yeah. Adelaide yeah. will just go. I See like you that. later. I like that. Yeah, I'm, um, just, I'm just looking at the stats from last year's game. Yeah, 36, 38 and two. Ebony Marinoff, twenty six disposals. Ponta, yeah. twenty four and one. Like that's yeah. the thing. The Crows didn't even play Jesus. bad against North. It was just like um, two kicks. It was yeah. in the end. So, and then I think Freo's a lot. Yeah, yeah compared 100%. to this, the top the sort of six teams, then Freo's a bit lower. Than that, yeah. Also, Danielle Ponta with her ankle as well. She looked. Mm. I think she pulled up really. Um, saw off that last week as well. So I think she's been nursing that for a few weeks. Big so game for Gould then. Yeah. And uh, Chelsea Randall, who was awesome. Oh, yeah. my God. Last week. Yeah, Chelsea. All right, tips and margins, stats guy. Look, I don't see Freo getting close. I think it's going to be 30 points. I'm going to go Crows by 30. I've gone Adelaide by 23. Ooh. 45. Oh, I, I thought I was going to be Bye like, bye. Really? Matt, I saw him do it last year by 70. So I can see – and it's at Norwood. I can see them doing it again. This could be that. <clears throat> they They – Arguably could have, should have won that game last week. Have mm. a home prelim. And it's like all week they're like, oh, just like it's that steely resolve that yeah. they've got. Mm-hmm. It's like when they had that result <clears throat> earlier in the year, was it against Melbourne at Norwood? And then they just went to GWS and just went bang, mm. <laughs> bang. <laughs> all right, let's get to Icon Park, 7.30 on Saturday night. Hawthorne take on Port Adelaide. Yes. Hawthorne at 2-0, and oh, have won by two goals and eight points here. So you've got the third uh, best offense in the league in Hawthorne against the seventh. Hawthorne, a fourth in defense, power eighth. But we saw last week Port Adelaide kick their second highest score ever. The Haw- offense is up and about. Hawthorne yeah. have kicked scores for fun this year when they've wanted to as well. You have a look at these two teams last year. They stank. <laughs> they well, are- no, two seasons ago, they stank even more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they've been prog- they've been progressively getting better, and now they both find themselves in a semi final. Port Adelaide have won seven straight. Hawthorne have lost two games out of 12. You have a team that's coming chock full of confidence up against a team that's like, oh, we we, we can lose? What's going on here? Yeah, still this, confident. This though. feels a little, like I know they're not North and Brisbane level, but this is unstoppable force and movable object vibes. Yeah. Well, but, I yeah. can't wait. I'm going to go. It's going it's nice. to be an absolute ripper. I feel like... Like power have really got the momentum yeah. with them at the moment. They've got confidence, but they've still got that underdog yeah. spirit about them. Really high um, contest. Love and it. I feel like the Hawks, they're definitely confident in their ability, their skills, their game plan and that kind of stuff. But I don't think the Hawks are taking a full throttle into this game. I think they've come I think they've Ooh, taken the pa- yeah. I think they've taken the the jets off a little bit, yep. and I think unless they know how to access that, I think power are really going to take it to really? them and maybe give them the shock of a lifetime. Oh, there you go, the power and the shock. Was that on purpose? No. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> I was like, everyone's lost there now. No, I knew it. As soon as you <laughs> said, I was like, oh, this is good. That was just an accident, but it, it worked out pretty well. I, I, the only Just thing the I'm worried about flowing through yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about with the power, their win last week was the first all year against a top eight team. They've had a lot. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I've just read. Don't look at me like that, Alex. I, I don't think they've beaten anyone else. Who, uh, who did they play last week? No, I'm going crazy. Richmond. Richmond. Yeah, that was the first top eight team they've beaten all year. They've won seven straight games, but compared to Hawthorne, who have beaten a lot of good teams, I think Richmond. Port have had a much easier run. 
Alex is trying to. Okay, fact you check. keep, you keep talking. That's actually that's an excellent. I'm about. That's an excellent point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, I do think they they're better than that stat suggests because they scored seventy two points against Richmond, who are a really yeah. good side. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah they lost. Yeah, yeah they he's they trying lost. to fact check. No, my stats no, here. Oh, I've got it because you've got to fact check the you've back. You've got a few wrong. I've got a few. Nah, I never. Good job, stats guy. There we go. Got it right. But yeah, I think Hawks. That's why I'm. I like the Hawks better in this, just because they've dominated all season. Last week as well, I know they lost, but they kicked a lot of behinds. They just yeah. were a bit inaccurate. They could have yeah. beaten Brisbane. The pressure. The pressure. So I'm hoping that first final they're going. All right, that's out of the way. Bit of nerves, bit young team, things like that. And they come back and they're back to their usual self this week. That's what I'm hoping. But, if I you know. was Port, <clears throat> I'd be trying to rattle them in the first quarter. Yes, because they're definitely rattleable. They are. The they're young. Yeah. yeah, they're young. They're definitely, like, as I said, they're confident in their skills. They know how to play. They yep. know their game plan. They can adapt. They've got depth in the team. Yep. But if you shake them around, yeah. they they sometimes lose uh, a, a little bit of that presence Everyone's under the pressure. Everyone's got to play until they get punched it in the It sort of face. happened yeah. against, uh, they didn't lose to Melbourne, but Melbourne were very close to beating them. I mean, no one thought Melbourne yeah. were going to get that close. 100%. Yeah. Melbourne just brought that energy to the contest yep. straight away. And yep. the Hawks were like, ooh. And yeah. they, they love that. Um, run and gun. Un- uncontested footy. Yeah, that run and gun, that control, the move fast, yep. the wave of runners around them. And I think that's the first thing that drops off when you get rattled because then everyone stops thinking about the team and they start thinking <laughs> yeah. about, oh, I better not do something wrong. True. You know? True. You don't and want so that I in think a final, that's yeah. where it goes. And I think Port, the way they come out of their defensive 50, they look for a contested mark. They're trying to gain um, territory. Um, and I think that it might. They might come close. I'm yeah. I'm talking myself out of picking the Hawks. So oh, just looking at Hawthorne this year, they've played four top eight teams. They're two and two. Yeah. So they be- got blown off the park by the Crows earlier in the season. Obviously lost last week, and then they beat uh, Richmond, and then there was someone else that they beat. That's, that's okay, in the so top it's not eight. that big of a difference, but yeah, yeah, I think they've had to play. They've had a harder draw, and they've got to yeah. Got to yeah, play. I wouldn't say it's a harder draw. There's a lot of lower eight teams there. Oh, they beat Freo. That's who they beat on the road. So yeah. Okay. But you have a look. Like they they beat Gold Coast. They beat Geelong. They beat St Kilda. Mm. Uh, they got yeah smoked by Adelaide. They beat Collingwood. They they've had the draw to make the finals. Fair. They smacked Carlton around. So yep. yeah, I think Hawthorne have had the, both teams have had the draw to make the finals. That's their improvement has eclipsed where they were obviously, yeah. and it's worked out well for them. And you look at teams. Like next year, like Geelong, Sydney, Melbourne are going to have that draw to help them yeah. out. I think it's going to be a great game because look at the midfields. You know, you got two great rucks, Wales and Schultz. Fleming, Goody. You got Derek in there. Um, you've also got, oh, I've just completely spaced. You Liza throw, West. Yeah, Liza West. Yeah. You can throw Breed in there. Yeah. Uh, then you got you, goal kickers from Then you got teams. goal kickers. Greta Bodie, come oh, on, Bode. stand up, Greta Bodie. Yeah, you got Gilroy. You got McDonald's. Houghton, Teekle. Like Saint. Saints kicked six goals last four weeks. Yeah, footy. there's just there's footy. All of these players we've just talked about are in their prime of yeah. their career. Like, don't even worry about their age. I don't, age even, in, like I don't that. think they're even in their prime. Some well, actually, some of the young ones aren't. Yeah. They're going like this. Yeah, guy. true, true, true. But they they're playing at like that really top level <laughs> yeah. already, and it's just so exciting because oh, it's just some of the other players. You go, oh, they're on the way, to maybe down, but these teams are just on the way up. It's so exciting. Big question: Are Hawthorne the real deal, or are they flat track bullies? Oh. Ooh, I don't, they're not flat track bullies. They've been some good teams. They they could have won two good teams. They've played two good teams. Ah, well, two, well, two teams that I think are very good, and they've been beaten both times. But the power are very good. They're, they're, they're like they're good. They're not very good. Is what I, that's what okay. I think. So I, I think interesting. The Hawks are the, I think the Hawks are the real deal. Yeah, I think they were, they got a bit overawed by the uh, first final last week and kicked a lot of uh, behinds. They played well last. They kicked if, a lot of behinds. It was like four eight or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So. Hmm. Four eight to six two, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, but that's right. What do you what do you reckon? That was the big question then. Obviously, they are flat track bullies. Big question. You, you just wait. Yeah, that was my big question. So <laughs> yeah, that's but you have guy. to answer the so big you're, question. So you're, you will when we get to the tips. <laughs> that's guy, you're tipping Hawks. Oh, we go on the tips. Yeah. yeah, I'm going the Hawks every day of the week. I think I think they've they're a better team if they can just kick a slightly more accurate. They're going to have a, more scoring shots. They've they've shown that we're talking about their offense, but they have a really good defense. Fourth in defense as well. The uh, power are not going to get anywhere near seventy two points like they did. Last week, I think I could. This could be uh, come back to bite me, but I genuinely think the Hawks will win, maybe by three goals, eighteen points. I'm gonna go Hawks by six. Oh, I thought you tricked t- turn yourself. No, on I haven't turned myself. I'm, I'm just, I'm having There's an internal joke, conflict. Sure it. It could, it be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. turned many things in my life myself. Not after four months, I'm allowed to make that joke. <laughs> I think it'll be a really good game though, and then Hawks maybe just kick a few late. 
I've offended anyone, I'm sorry. Uh, Port Adelaide by two goals. Oh, he's tipped Port. Yeah. I, I thought someone oh, would tip Port. Yeah, I, I've got just that vibe from last week. Uh, I always jump on board on one of the elimination final winners. It just because there's always an elimination final team that somehow finds a way to get the job done. So I'm going to jump on board there. Don't mind that. With uh, Port getting the job done by two goals. So because there's only two games and we put up the tip sheet on yeah. the socials, who's going to be best on ground? Yeah, we should do that for the other yeah, one as well. I'll go back to the other game in a second. Oh, in this game? Yeah. Or. Greta Bodie. Oh. She needs to stand up. Nice. Yeah. I'm Starts going on. Jazz Fleming. She averages 21 disposals against top eight teams in her career. So not bad. Ooh, I like that. I, I forgot to say that little stat. <laughs> we know who I'm going. Uh, hey. Shonzi. No. Teeks. Teeks. Oh, Teeks. Teeks will kick a few goals. Yeah. Teeks kicks four. Four? Yeah. <laughs> That's a, we're getting into the big calls. <laughs> it's not my big call. Oh. Uh, and back to the other game. Best on ground in Adelaide and Fremantle. And uh -huh. Hatchard revenge game. Ooh. For not being in the Australian Well, no. Game. Yeah, for... Be, not being in the All Australian team and having a bit of a flat one last week, first time all year she hasn't reached twenty disposals. Ooh, I'm gonna say Gould okay. kicks three. Oh yeah, Gould. I just feel like we haven't really talked. Make sure we though. send these to Spence. Yeah, we will. I'm just. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, go obvious. Ed Mariner. Yeah, yeah, yeah honestly, that's so fair. She's gonna. She'll probably get best on ground. She's yeah. gonna step up. Sweet. All right, big call for the weekend ahead. Let's get into it, stats guy. Well, I did not have a big call yet. I'm trying to actually think. I was gonna go. I'll go Jazz Fleming to have her career best game. I think she's maybe like 30 disposals, can I say that? I reckon she's had 25 plus a few times. Yeah. I'll go Jazz Fleming. I'll she's, check her stats she, while you're doing Yeah, this. that's all right. I think she's going to have uh, yeah 30 plus, really step up, show that the Hawk, the Hawk Bowl, the young team players in this team are going to step up for them and mm. they're going to have to rely on their more experienced players and then the Hawks get a big win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my big call is how close – Port Adelaide are going to get to... 28 disposals is her most. So. Okay, there you go. 30. That is 30? Pretty high. There we go. Okay, career high. Yeah, you reckon Yeah, Port... I, I think Port yeah. are really going to take it to the Hawks. Okay. And I think that is a massive, massive call. Yeah, because the Hawks, yeah, I, I'll give you that. Mm. Adelaide just absolutely blitz Craig Freo. Like, yeah. just blitz them. Mm. Like, this isn't, oh, yeah, they won by a couple of This is like, oh... They're good. And this is, yeah, and this is next week. Brisbane just got, ah, oh, they're coming back. After yeah. that game, yeah. grand final weekend where... Let's be honest, the umpires helped Brisbane out that day. Whoa. Bit of, yeah. bit of revenge coming for Adelaide. <laughs> the other, yeah, the, on that, I think out of all four teams who you'd want to play, Freya. Yeah. yeah you, like, because every other team can kick a big score, whereas I don't think Freya. Yeah, like North are not going to care who they play. Uh, Brisbane, the last thing they want is Adelaide coming in with a f like full steam momentum. It's going to be fun. How good's footy? Yes. Keep an eye on Just keep an eye on the footy. It's going to be great. Keep an eye on the ruck battles across oh, both games. Yeah, yeah, we rucks. love Lucy yeah. Wales. Comes on yeah, the show. Came on the show. Friend of the pod. Friend of the, Friend of the, of the pod. pod. Friend of the show. Like, it's going to be great. I think this could be a weekend for forwards because you got, you know, Gould, Ponta, Randall kicking some goals. Yep. Freya, I'm not sure how they're going to kick goals, but then you look. Nobody's you know, sure how Freya is going to kick goals. But they might. I hope they, uh, yeah, show up. But then you've got Teeks. Houghton, Greta Bodie could kick some goals. Gilroy could kick some goals because Hawthorne McDonough. just spread the love. McDonough, McDonough she doesn't back. get frustrated against them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about that. Love yeah. to rattle the Irish. Who's yes. the annoying player from Port? Just, apparently, Sinead Goody is the most annoying player on Port Adelaide. So I just, could see that, Just send actually. her just going there just to yap in her head. She's <laughs> the, new, the new Emma Carney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, Carney just, loves, just, loves yeah. yeah. she's the lippiest. Yeah, she's the lippiest on field. Yeah, but when you're that good, you can be lippy. Absolutely. Like, yep. Jazz Garner's a little bit lippy. I've noticed. I'm like, what? No way. She's I quiet. It, no, I saw it a couple of times, but it's just that little sly, like, yeah, hey, screw you. Like, it's that little bit of like. <laughs> but she's allowed to be, yeah. You can do whatever you want, Jazz Garner. Big yeah. fan. All right. That is us done and dusted for AFLW today. Fought well today. Big thanks to our best friend from the pod. We've got Team Hawthorne involved. I still like Killer Whales better than uh, Pendles. I'm sorry. Oh, I love Pendles. Basketball background. That's just very funny yeah. to me. That, that's good. Thanks to you, Brian. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you to you, the stats guy. Also happy to be here. You will be hosting on Monday. Oh, no. No, I'm I'm taking taking look out. You Let's and me, go. kid. Let's yeah. go. Bang. And the intern. The intern's going to be back. Oh, she's going to be here? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've got to bring oh, I should know that. Big, yeah. Hawth big we'll Hawthorne. Get her on, I reckon we'll get her on for a game and she can report. Big Hawthorne fan, so we've yeah. got, to, got to get her involved. All right. Yeah, get her in for a review, an interview. Not confirmed yet, but. Have been emailing back and forth with North Melbourne, so hopefully we do have a player coming your way this coming Monday. So Stats Guy gets his dreams to come true to interview a North Melbourne player. <laughs> uh, but they'll be reviewing the two semifinals. I am taking a couple of days off. I'll be back for the preview of the preliminary finals next Thursday. Remember to smash a like across the social see us doing a bunch of fun stuff throughout the season, filling in your footy gaffs. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. It is AFLW Today, AFLW Today, AU on X. 
of course, YouTube. It's just AFLW Today. Just go to Google, AFL Today Show. Everything will come up there. Just go through that. It's the easiest way to find everything that we're doing. Get around all the other shows that we've got going. One more AFL Today for the season. The boys are doing a live drafting next week, I believe. Yes. Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets. Believe it or not, there's still more racing to come your way, even though the Melbourne Cup Carnival is over and you can finally get some sleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, get around them. Like, I'm going to get around... What are you mm. going to eat at Icon Park on Saturday? No, no, no. It's more, it's more what I'm going to eat in Torquay when I go down there. So I'm staying oh, at the Sands. Oh, Torquay. Or, yeah, just all, all the time. or just an early morning round of golf next Monday morning. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, nice. Lovely, sands? Yeah, the Sands. Oh, I'm staying I, at the Sands. I, I, yeah, my nice. uh, lovely partner is going to be driving the cart. I think that's the thing she's most excited for. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, she's going to have a Kindle and she's going to have the cart. Because so. golf is boring. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. We'll catch you on Monday for more AFL Derby today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember... Put it back! Excellent. Excellent. <laughs>